Congratulations. You're psychic. It's a fact. It's natural. It's a natural biological fact. That is what I came to tell you today. And the funny part is, I'm going to need you to use your the chat function or give me a show of hands in a moment because you see that that background behind me, that, that lovely rose, it is not the background that I usually use. I had to go and grab it and put it up here because not only is it natural and normal to be psychic or intuitive, but once you're aware of it and it starts to develop, um, it, can, it, can, it can increase and Sometimes it can be inconvenient. In this instance, I have a new thing, two new things that's happening for my intuitive ability. One, I am seriously interfering with the electronics when I get really excited. And for some reason, oh, because, that, because I interfere with electronics because my energy gets, just gets bigger, my regular background just disappeared all of a sudden. I've been using it for weeks now. It's, I, I have to go find it. And there's another thing that's happening. And you get a say in this one, okay? So lately, I have found that when I interact with people, their intuitive abilities tend to amp up, tend to increase. So I, I'm learning to manage the energy thing with electronics. Even today being here, I made sure I had two cell phones next to me in case I had to get off of my desktop and jump on to my to Zoom using my phones. This has actually been a thing lately. But the other thing is when I'm having these sorts of conversations, when I'm giving people readings, for example, I am finding that I am increasing their psychic access, their, their intuitive ability. Um, so before we proceed, if I could have a show of hands, if it's okay with you, if before this is over, your intuitive abilities increase a little bit. If that's a yes for you, <laughs> Um, it, could you raise your hand if that's a yes for you? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Carol, your hand isn't raised, so um, I will, oh, oh, it's okay, okay. <laughs> okay. I, because I, I will try to um, not have it affect people if they don't want it to. Morningstar, did you raise your hand? Was that a yes, KB? Let, okay, cool, great, thank you. Um, right. So, and please understand that our abilities typically unfold. It's a word that's actually commonly used, unfoldment. That, so that is to say that um, it will increase gently or as quickly as you can handle, actually. Often that's the case. So um, you can even, I even ask my students to not only raise their hand, but to say to the universe, yes, I would like my abilities. And also tell the universe how you'd like them. Like keep it pretty, nothing in the middle of the night, things like that. Think of what works for you and let the universe know. So thank you for giving me yeses. I will go ahead and do this thing now and continue. So people often wonder if they're psychic. The fact that you're here listening to me, you're probably rationally, reasonably aware that there is that possibility. And if you were looking for confirmation, here's your confirmation. You've got it. Consider it official. The way I look at it is this. We are built for this. I, I'm science-based. We are structured to have access to our intuitive abilities. It is not only natural, it is like being, like being an old fashioned TV antenna and wondering why you're picking up transmissions. 
because you're made that way, you are literally made of universe. You are not outside of the universe looking at the universe. You are within the universe. You are part of it. You are more than part. You are within the universe. In the world of physics, they call it non-duality. As a, a friend of mine, uh, Lenar says, reminds me, there is no out there. We are part of it all. Here's my, a better example, I think, and it just visualize this. Could you imagine if we were there when um, early people found a stone with magnetic properties? You know, we, now we've got fancy magnets. But imagine a fancy magnet then, if you will, being found by someone who's never seen a magnet before. And then them placing it where metal iron is nearby and the iron starts moving toward the magnet. Can you imagine the degree of freaking out they would do? They probably back in the day would have called someone to, to douse it with holy water and say a prayer over it. They, but this we know is entirely natural. We give our children magnets to play with, refrigerator magnets. This is how natural it is to be intuitive. It is just a part of nature. Some scientists think that our ability to have premonitions, to have precognitions, forerunners, an idea of something that's about to happen, they think that that was something that we used to use when out hunting or when we're out gathering berries. It's good to know that you're going to get a little itchy feeling if something is coming up behind you. <laughs> it's good to get a, a feeling if the thing you're looking for is around the next rock or tree or corner. That feeling that we get when we, when we know someone's looking at us and we turn around, that is part of this natural capacity of ours. It is part of our human potential. So I'm saying it is time to stop making believe that it's not real, that it's not normal. I would love for people to think that there's something incredibly special and singular about me. I'd like to think that it's not this though. Maybe there, I, I, I'd like to think we're all singular in our way, so then I'm singular in my way too. But when it comes to being intuitive and psychic, that is something that everyone has access to. It's so normal that it's part of the way that we think, and it's so normal that the things we consider about it are just part of the background of our world. For example, it's kind of believed that when there's poltergeist activity in someone's home, I've seen on scientific TV shows where they, they go to, to investigate poltergeist activity and they're quick to say, it's probably not a poltergeist, but do you have an adolescent, a teenage girl in the house? So they're quick to say it's not a poltergeist, which is fine by me. But they're also quick to say it's probably just something energetic about a teenage girl in your house who is having an impact on the environment. The way I'm impacting electronics, but, you know. So we kind of already have it in our societies that these things really do happen. We kind of have stories about how children are psychic, but they lose that ability as they get older. This is a common saying. They lose the ability to get older after they are old enough for people to have told them it's their imagination. I have two examples for you. My son, who now is an energy healer, when someone is ill, I call him and I say, could you focus on someone please for me? But when he was a teenager, he told me when this sort of stuff was being discussed because 
this is my life. And it started getting louder and louder as I accepted it for myself. He said, yeah, I used to see auras when I was little. I was like, what? I never knew that about my own child. My husband, he, he was, he didn't even like Star Trek. He didn't even like, he, he actually, actually left me in the movie theater to watch Harry Potter and went to a different theater. You know, those multiplexes. He went to a different, different theater to watch something else. Cause no, wait, wait. That's because he fell asleep while it was on. He just, it, this wasn't his stuff. But when this stuff started happening in my life and I started to take it more seriously and I shared that with my husband, he said, okay, so there's this story, right? I got to tell you. When I was a kid, like five years old, my grandmother used to come and visit me in my bedroom. She would be at, she'd stand at the foot of my bed and talk to me. His grandmother had left being physical quite some, before he was born, actually. He said that his grandmother came and talked to him and made him feel good about the unique person he was and was just really loving and very, very supportive in a household that wasn't all that loving and supportive, you know, because unique children sometimes get that. And he mentioned it to his mother. And then one day he was in the room having a conversation with his grandmother and his mother overheard and she came charging in the room and said, leave that child alone. And his grandmother went away and never came back. But the fact that that was a fact of his life is just an example I have. I mean, you may have examples that you know of. Those extra feelings, those extra hunches. So yes, it's natural, it's normal. Being what I call a science-based intuitive, a science-based um, psychic um, who, for whom quantum physics and post-materialist physics is very dear. I do have one quote for you. Okay, two quotes, but here's the first one. It's from the physicist Russell Targ. He said, we often say that psi is like musical ability. It is widely distributed in the populace and everyone has some ability and can participate to some extent in the same way that the most non-musical person can learn to play a little Mozart on the piano. On the other hand, there is no substitute for innate talent and there is no substitute for practice. That's in his book, Limitless Mind, A Guide to Remote Viewing and Transformation of Consciousness. So speaking of Russell Targ, I come bearing gifts for you. Um, I will put this in the chat for you all, but you can exercise your extrasensory perception as they used to call it. You can exercise your intuition, you can develop it. And there's an app for that. Russell Targ has, has two. One is called ESP Trainer. I quite love that one. It's got squares, four squares, red, yellow, green, blue, and you have to pick which one is going to come up next as their selection. Out of 24, my highest score so far is 15 right. And um, I'm embarrassed to tell you what it says at the top when you get 15 right. It says something like psychic, oracle, mystic. It's like, I don't, that's so embarrassing to me somehow. But my phrase, the phrase, phrase I love that he uses is beyond all statistical probability. <laughs> you know, and I was like, well, 15 out of 24, isn't this, that's not that big. And then I was like, imagine this. I had to think of this when, speak, when thinking of speaking to you this morning. Imagine flipping a coin 24 times and guessing that it's going to come up heads and being right 15 out of 24 times. Even I myself, have to admit, you know, that would be something that, that, that would be something. So he's got that one. And just so you know, the ESP trainer was developed with NASA. So I bring this to you through officialdom. There's a new one that I use and it is called the Stargate, the Stargate, um, what's that called? The Stargate thingy. Okay. And the cool part about that is that um, the Stargate, um, ah, here it is. The Stargate ESP trainer also, 
is designed to help you learn to describe distant or future events. It is a direct outgrowth of the secret $25 million CIA Stargate program with dozens of viewers at the SRI, which is a research institute, where we showed, this is Russell Targ saying, where we showed that psychic abilities are real and available. So, um, I don't want to blow up his spot, but we have someone here in our midst today, if I'm not mistaken, I hope I don't embarrass him, or he was here, yes, he's there, um, Leo Hill, one of our own members. He is very good at the remote viewing tournament app. That's another app. And by the way, all of these apps, if they're not free, their cost is not great because I do not recall being shocked or appalled or offended when I downloaded them. So go ahead, find them, enjoy them, allow yourself to play with them. And um, the, the um, remote viewing tournament app, I'm very, very proud to say, oh yes, I guess I get to brag a little bit. Um, Leo Hill was one of my first students. And in this last year alone, he not only placed in the top 10 of all the users of that remote viewing tournament app, and that's something people use around the world. He placed number three in the world on that tournament app. Leo Hill, I salute you. I'm so proud of you. Um, he is a physical medium. And in fact, he is something, I think I may have just come up with this term, a mechanical medium. He um, can use radios and things like that and pick up folks. His, his friends, as he calls them most beautifully. So Russell Targ was involved with two of those apps and they're there for you to use and for you to, to develop your intuition. Um, and it brings me to my favorite thing to tell you. And that is that when you use those apps, I suggest that you think about how you're feeling when you're getting your best score. Try meditating or not before you use it. Try, for me, I have personally found that gratitude, joy, love, these are the mindsets and heart sets that get me my highest scores. But they found that the frequency related to love, loving kindness, is the gamma frequency. And you can play that from, you can grab that from YouTube and play it. But the thing is, why I love that so much is because loving kindness gets you the best scores. Loving kindness gets you access to your abilities at the highest level. I call it why Luke Skywalker must beat Darth Vader. Because yes, it's natural for everyone, even a Darth Vader, to be psychic. But it is your loving kindness and being a good guy, I'm about to make myself cry, that gets you the win, that makes it the win. And if you're wondering why I'm talking about this, what's in it for me that you understand that you're psychic? It's because this is natural for us. I want to live in a world where people walk down the street going, and you hear them on their cell phone going, yeah, I thought I should call you. I had a feeling that you might want to talk to me. Or you hear them saying, yes, I knew I would find a good parking spot. I could just feel it. I mean, the X-Men, Professor Xavier's Academy for Gifted Children, this is our future. This is the world we get to live in. And because it's tied to loving kindness, the people I call my people, the loving kind, we are, you are, because I suspect you are those types of people, you are at the leading edge of that world. And what we get by having that world is access to all of these abilities and probably solutions to some of our biggest problems. And frankly, it gets us access to people who don't live on our planet people from other places. More than that, it gets us access to the next stage on our planet, which is just like when the Middle Ages ended or the, and the start of the Renaissance, that is this period. That's where you've, when you've chosen to be here. 
when this is the, con the type of conversation we're having. And it means that, well, here's the funny part. I don't know if you remember this, but when cell phones were fairly new and uh, bl bl uh, Bluetooth earbuds were new, I remember walking down the street in Manhattan, coming from my office and seeing somebody having a very serious conversation. And all I could think was is, oh my goodness, it's gonna be one of those days in New York <laughs> where people are walking down the street talking very animatedly to themselves. And it took me a little while to realize, oh, this is new technology. They're, they're talking to an actual someone. Whew. So this is the way it's going to be. Imagine that, but in relation to our psychic abilities, we'll be seeing that in our world. And I'm gonna wrap this up because I get so excited. I know I go longer than the 20 minutes they give me and I, I want to make room for the, the next piece. And I'm so glad you all are here, but yeah, you're psychic get over it and get on with it. Be loving kind, have access to all that is you because that's human potential. And frankly, one little piece I want to say, people used to think of it as being superstitious to think that we have these abilities. I think it's the other way around. The superstition was on the behalf of the scientific community because they didn't take this stuff seriously. This was real. We are still calling ourselves psychic. And I think that that era is ending because it is normal and natural. I think being psychic, calling ourselves psychic is like calling cough syrup a potion. It's just old language. And we still say spirit and spirits but I think it might be easier for you to think in terms of energy, vibrational beings, people who are on in other dimensions. And that is to say like on Star Trek, when somebody's in one of those um, um, transporter accidents and the, it's the episode where they're running around going, we're here, we're here, you just don't see us. I think we're going to realize that our loved ones our future selves, our guides, they are a dimension away. I don't know about you, but if it helps you be less anxious, think of that instead of thinking of spirits. They're interdimensional beings. And when you think of them as that, and then you think of all the other kinds of interdimensional beings, think of this. If we were in a flat world where there were no three dimensions, if we try to explain how we might be the ones who could see depth or height, it would seem weird to people. I think that we access other dimensions with our intuitive abilities. And when we try to explain it to people, they think it's weird and strange, but it is really just as natural as a magnet drawing a piece of metal to it. Just as natural and just as normal. So, This is why your law of attraction works. This is why you have access to your loved ones and can hear from them. This is why you get those lovely, extra wonderful hunches. I wish you all of who you are, joyfully, confidently. This is your universe and you are this universe. And loving kindness makes it work best. And so again, congratulations, you're psychic. Get over it. <laughs> Just get on with it. Thank you.